All right, you guys. Welcome to or back to my channel, Mel KB Vlogs. <laughs> If you haven't subscribed already, please do like this video if you like it, share it, all the fun stuff. So we're going to just jump into this today. We are talking about Actors' Equity Open Access. So for those of you who don't know, Actors' Equity is the union that um, protects actors. Um, they have lots of it's how do i even explain they have lots of different rules and things so if you are an equity member you are there are certain rules that are in place for how you're treated in rehearsals and shows like during the run how you're paid how contracts are lots of different things so for example um there are rules set in place if you are working on a production with equity actors, um, if you're in rehearsal, after a certain amount of time goes by, there must be a five minute break or a 10 minute break. Um, there must be certain things uh, accessible to the actors, just like lots of like things that kind of seem common sense, but a lot of theaters or places don't run in in that way they don't like think of certain things that like actors need so um basically if you are an equity actor you you are protected and cared for in a much better way um that being said being an equity saying that equity equity is the only like <clears throat> how do i say this Equity is not in place in all professional acting settings, if that makes sense. So for example, I am non-equity. I have done two cruise ships in which that is not covered by equity. So although that is definitely professional performing, professional theater, um, I that is not equity. Um, they do look to equity and use some of their their rules and like guidelines to how to treat actors yet they still are not equity so it's still not equity pay um you know all of that um national tour of a chorus line non-equity which is actually a very big like i don't know a lot of people when when I say, oh, I was on the chorus line tour, they're like, oh, is it non-union? And you can kind of sense like a little like judgment there or something. And I understand it to a degree. So we're going to jump into that first. Um, the national tour of a chorus line was done by the entire Broadway revival creative team, meaning director, choreographer, costume designer, um, the set everything was the uh, music director they were straight from the Broadway revival however it was done it was produced non-equity which meant that they hired non-equity actors to do the show um, however the tour was sold at equity prices at these theaters that we were performing at so but as a non-union tour the actors are paid a lot less so when I did that tour as, um, I think I was, I was 23 when it started, you know, as a 23 year old, like doing my dream show and not being paid that well, it was fine. You know, it went by, but now as you get older and you know, money matters a whole lot more and you really need to be saving up and supporting yourself those tours aren't as much of an option for you anymore so just to put things plainly um on the chorus line tour i was paid 600 a week and i think i got maybe like i forget exactly how much it was but i think like a 200 stipend per week 
for food and things like that. So it was actually not bad. Um, so like on average, like $800 a week I got on tour. So for a non-equity tour, that's pretty good because I also know that there were some people in my cast uh, who played different roles were paid like $375 a week, which is not good. <laughs> so yeah, that's how much I was paid. But then to put it in perspective, if I was on the equity tour of a chorus line and it was a production contract, which is what a Broadway contract is and a lot of tours are a production contract, I would have been making the equity minimum or more, probably more because I was Val, um, which let me tell you what the equity minimum is. I would have been making $2,168. Compare that to my 600 plus my per diem. Yeah, big difference, big difference. And the crazy part is the only difference between my tour and the equity tour was that they weren't this company that I did it with just did not work with Actors Equity to make this happen. So we didn't and we also weren't protected then by equity rules as well. So some things happened where it just like this would never happen on an equity tour. And of course, this was many years ago, so I don't remember like too well, but I'm pretty sure on an equity tour, it would be against the rules to have the cast be on a bus for eight hours traveling and then go directly into a show. Pretty sure that would never happen. I think on an equity tour, the rule is if you travel, you do not perform that day. On a non-union tour, you most travel days, you will perform that night. And maybe an outsider will see that and be like, oh, that is not that big of a deal. Like who cares? Your job is to perform like, and you're touring. So obviously you're gonna travel and perform. But think about it, you are in a chorus line where you are on stage for two hours straight, standing on a line, your body's killing you, you are doing crazy dancing, your body's going through a lot. And the whole day prior, you were sitting on a bus like this with your hips tight, your back compressed, you are not warm at all. And then the next day, you do the show that night, the next day you're straight back on the bus sitting like this. Your muscles aren't given the chance to relax, stretch out, all of that. And then over time, that leads to injury. That would never happen on, a, on an equity tour, only a non-equity tour. So that, I'm just putting it all in perspective of really like the difference. So I, I was truly fine with that at age 23. I um, had the time of my life, honestly, like it was fine. Did I leave with multiple injuries? Yes, but it was fine. Um, but now at age 27, I really want to be equity. And my goal going into 2020 before the pandemic, I was like, okay, I really want to book a contract that will give me my equity card. Now, let me explain how that works. So the way to get your equity card and be an equity actor there, well, this was before open access. So before July, <laughs> um, the old way was you had to audition, add an equity audition and be really lucky and book a show that the producers are like, great, we want her in this equity track because also in regional theater, things are allocated by equity track and non-equity track. That's a whole other thing. Google it if you want to know more. It's a, I don't want to waste that time. Um, but you say you audition for a regional theater and they're like, she's great for this track. We as the producers are going to offer her her equity card and she's going to play this track and she will get her card from doing this show. That's how a lot of people get their cards. Another way is by literally auditioning for a Broadway tour or show and just booking it. And there you go, your equity because Broadway tours, um, Broadway equity tours and Broadway, everybody's equity. The third way and another like kind of common way is EMC points, equity membership candidate. So if you work at an equity theater that has equity contracts as a non-union person, you will get a point per week towards your equity card. 
it used to be that you needed I think like 50 points to become equity a few years ago they changed it to 25 which people were like up in arms about um, and now you don't need any so um, I'm like rant oh my god I'm like sweating okay so for example I still at this point only have three equity points and that is from a production of Billy Elliot I did at the North Carolina Theater. That is how I got my EMC card. So I was like half equity, not really, but I was on my way. So I went into 2020 saying, okay, I'm 27 years old. I only have three EMC points. I need 25 to get my card. Really the only way I'm going to get my card is by auditioning and having somebody be like her. I want her to get her card. So that was my goal. Also, side note, most of the jobs that you will do to get EMC points um, are very, very low paying. They are usually $300 a week. That's really it. That's like generally the, the wage. Um, so a lot of times those jobs are really great for college students on their summers in between school and that is how they kind of rack up points they book like a whole season at a theater and they will get equity points and then lots of kids leave with way more than 25 points and they can join the union however a lot of people can't afford to take jobs that low paying because they don't have the means to support themselves um, a lot of people have student loans to pay off other bills um, they are not being fully supported by their parents in college or out of college so those jobs really aren't possible for a lot of people and once i hit like 25 and i was fully living on my own in new york city and had to support myself i knew i couldn't really take those jobs like i was like there's no way i'm going to be working at these theaters to gain equity points because i can't afford to take those low paying jobs i have other bills to pay things that I need money for and I just can't afford that. Some people can, so it's crazy. Um, anyway, <sighs> so that is how you joined the union before. Now, with Actors' Equity Open Access, this is how you can join now. You can submit to Actors' Equity and you just have to prove that you have been paid to perform that is it and then they will say okay you can join the union my immediate thoughts on that initially i thought you know what that is great because me looking at myself i was like looking at my resume there's no reason i shouldn't be able to join the union if i want to there's no reason clearly i am a professional actor um however that doesn't mean that sally may from connecticut can be a professional actor because her uncle Hank, you know, owns a theater and he paid her $200 to play Ado Annie in Oklahoma. Like, that girl should not be able to just like stroll in and get her equity card. I don't think. I think maybe more proof of like, yes, I am an active member of this industry. And I think maybe that could be taken on a case-by-case -case basis. That's what I've always thought. So that was also my initial reaction to hearing about this. Now, now, Actors' Equity has painted this change under the eyes of diversity and inclusion. And this is where it gets a little dicey. So I see where they are coming from. So what they're saying is they don't want how do I explain this? By the numbers, BIPOC actors aren't, aren't getting their equity card as often as white actors. And that can be placed under like the fault of a million things. Um, I think the main reason is because only truly privileged people can take the contracts that are very low paying that get you your equity card or get you your equity points to get you closer to join the union. That is a privileged place to be, to be able to take those low paying jobs. That means that somebody else is supporting you 
to help you out, right? So I think that's really where it comes from. But Actors Equity is saying they don't think that it should be in the power of the producers at the theaters of who gets their card and who doesn't, which I agree with. So Actors Equity is saying, as the Actors Union, we shouldn't be putting up a barricade of who can join the union. If you want to join the union, you should be able to. And I think at the, at the heart of that, I totally agree with that. I think that is so true. A union's job is to protect people who do a certain line of work. You know, Actors Equity should not be like this staple of like, like if you are equity, then you must be talented and you must be amazing. And that is like the height of professional theater. It shouldn't be that. If you are being paid to perform, that should be covered under a union. So side note, that's why I really think non-union work just needs to like go. That should not be legal anymore at this point in 2021. Professional actors who are performing for audiences that are paying $100 plus a ticket should be covered under a union to be protected, to be paid a fair wage, to be protected, have rules to help them stay safe physically, mentally, all of that. Anyway, I digress. Um, so back to the diversity and inclusion. So Actors Equity is kind of painting this under that umbrella. There's good and there's bad to that. Um, so the part where I'm like, mm, what? Is that I know a lot of members this past year have not been paying their dues to equity. And that is because there is no work. Like, nobody is working right now, so you should not be paying a union dues if, if there aren't even options to be working. So people aren't paying their dues, Actors' Equity needs money, so they said anybody can join to try to get money. And let me just tell you how much it costs to join. I know that you do need $600 as a down payment. How much to join Actors' Equity? Okay. The addition initiation fee initiation fee is seventeen hundred dollars but you have to put six hundred down the day that you decide to join and then you can slowly pay off the rest so that in itself is also a privileged thing not many actors especially actors who have not been working because of a pandemic have even six hundred dollars to just give out like even my my mta 275 puts a dent in my wallet. So I'm pretty sure I can't just give $600. So that I'm gonna just add, bing. that is my number one reason why I'm not joining right now because I literally don't have the funds for it. So that that is that. It's, it's hard to tell their full intentions. I think at the core, their intentions are good, but I think that they didn't they thought of the one good thing and then they didn't follow along with other ways to make it easier. So now, joining equity does not mean that suddenly jobs are going to be available to you. These are the perks of joining equity um, and this is why it was my goal to join equity. Number one, you are required to be seen at equity auditions. So when auditions are back in person, if you are an equity member and you show up to this audition, it is guaranteed that you will be seen. That is their rule. Um, that's really the main reason why I wanted to be equity was because I was sick of going to all of these auditions for shows that I really thought I was right for that I wanted to get in there for mostly Broadway shows and Broadway tours and a lot of regional theaters as well. There are so many equity actors and so many non-union actors that it was becoming impossible to even be seen at these auditions. So by becoming an equity actor, you are then saying, okay, great. I'm not going to have to waste my day all day sitting at this audition, hoping to be seen because as an equity member, I will be seen. Now, now that Actors' Equity is saying anybody can join, that means that there's going to be a lot more equity members at these auditions. So my main question is, what is Actors' Equity going to be doing to ensure that every member that shows up to these auditions is seen? Because if we are under this union, you need to uphold that rule. That is the, the most important thing. Um, I personally think that they should allocate three days to each equity course call and equity principal audition 
to make sure that people are seen. Um, they just need to, they need to give actors more time and equity can make these rules that the theaters will follow suit. So these Broadway shows, I'm sorry that they have to pay their creative team to be at these auditions for that long, but that's the way it has to be to treat the members in the union fairly. That's like the main thing I'm worried about. Um, and then also equity doesn't really have a say in what these theaters around the country and these non-union tours are doing. So just because there are more equity members doesn't mean that there are more equity contracts in the world. There are not. There are the same amount that there have always been. So the other thing is the question of are regional theaters going to step up and make their full casts equity? Um, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure the only regional theater in the country that has a full equity cast is the Muni in St. Louis. And I think every theater, that should be the way it is. Um, they don't need to pay people production contract salary. Um, a lot of regional theaters equity contracts are like six, seven, eight hundred dollars a week. So I think theaters need to be paying people that amount. And I know, you know, the economy is rough. A lot of theaters can't afford this, but there needs to be some big conversation between Actors Equity and these theaters to figure this out because professional actors can't continue working at such a low wage. And I know for myself, I don't want to be accepting those jobs at $300, $400 a week anymore. Um, second, I'm wondering what they're going to do about non-union tours because there are a lot of tours of shows that people are dying to do that are non-union. Cats is going out this year, Anastasia, um, lots of different things. They are non-union. So that's the other thing. If you join the union, you cannot take non-union work. So if you join the union now, because you can, and oh, all of a sudden I get a call because say I did join the union and I get a call from cats and they're like, hey, we actually wanna offer you this role. I wouldn't be able to take it anymore. So that's a big decision you have to make. Do I want to you know, count myself out of those jobs? So really by choosing to be equity, you are choosing to count yourself out of a lot of other jobs, which it should be the complete opposite. It should be if I'm joining this, joining this union, I'm opening the world. I'm opening my world to be able to book more jobs, but that's, that's not true. So I'm like winded. All in all, the reason why I'm not joining right away. And it's so funny because it was literally my goal a few months ago I would have done anything to just join the union because I want to be seen at auditions. Now I'm waiting because, and to, to be fair, I think I probably am going to be joining next year. Um, there's definitely gonna come a point where I'm gonna be like, I have to join. But I want to wait and see what happens um, because I wanna see if equity comes out with proof that they are going to see all of their members at auditions. I want to see how the regional theaters react. I, I want to see what, what's going to happen because I don't want to screw myself over in the end and regret joining. Um, but if it comes to a point where I truly am not being seen at any auditions because if there are a lot of equity members, the chance of non-union being seen at an equity call is about zero. And I, the jobs I want to be auditioning for right now are Broadway and um, equity tours. So because those are my goals, I, I'm going to have to join eventually. Um, but I have to start allocating money towards that 600 that I'll have to put down. And I just want to see what happens. I want to see how this all unfolds because a lot is bound to change. Um, and I'm not going to give away $600 for nothing. So that's where I'm at. I'm just going to see what happens. And um, yeah, I hope a lot of that made sense. I, I hope I kind of covered everything. I feel like I was all over the place. But 
if you have other questions let me know um I did like gloss over certain things um a lot of it you can just like easily look up and you'll see what what is what um but yeah I hope I covered a lot of what you all are wondering um I know a lot of actors all have many different opinions on this I've talked to friends who are like no this is great this is wonderful the union needs to be more inclusive they need to just like cover actors asses and other people are like no I worked so hard to become equity now this isn't fair that that anybody can join blah 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 I don't really agree with that um stance I think that's a little much like I'm gonna go on another tangent but equity should have never been this thing of like oh my god I'm equity now like this is the proof that I'm a professional actor I just don't think that should have ever been the case it should equity should never have been this like behind a gate big thing um it's a union it's a labor union get over yourself <laughs> honestly um so that's what I think um there like I said a, there are a lot of opinions out there um if you are an actor I hope hearing my opinion has helped you kind of figure out what you're gonna do if you are non-union if you are non-union comment down below and tell me what what your thoughts are and what you are gonna do because I I want to know I want to know what everyone's thinking I just think this is like a fascinating thing none of us saw this coming it's exciting and it's scary and it's new so we just gotta see what's gonna happen um yeah so hope this made sense hope you guys enjoyed it and that's it thank you so much I will talk to you guys next time bye